I often get asked for the best tips for staying sober. Many people take a break from drinking and maybe they feel like they're stopping using willpower or they're gritting their teeth a little bit, which can be known as white knuckling it. That is the last thing that we want to be doing. We want to feel like we're free, that we're enjoying life, that we're not even really thinking about alcohol. And very often people want to know what are the best tips to ensure that I can stay sober, start enjoying life and start living without alcohol interfering with everything. Now, one of the most important things to do is to look at the threats. What are the things in your life that could be a threat to your sobriety? The things that might cause you to drink again. Now, usually this is people, places, situations, and behaviors. There might be people in your life who have toxic aspects of their personality, and maybe they stir up some uncomfortable emotions in you. Or there might be places that you've got a strong association with drinking with, and it's probably not advisable to head back to those places or to have too much contact with those type of people after you've quit drinking. Now that's not to say as you go forward that you should completely avoid these things forever. As you become more solid in your sobriety, you'll find it much easier to have contact to revisit these places. But initially, it's all about keeping yourself safe and putting boundaries in place that are going to protect you from anything that could be a threat to your sobriety. Now that doesn't mean cutting people out of your life. It might just mean keeping a distance or visiting them at places that don't cause you to become triggered, whatever you need to do. But it's important to really evaluate this and think about what you really need. Don't just say yes to everything. Don't just turn up at every social gathering. I want you to think hard. I use the phrase fog, fear, obligation or guilt. If you're being invited to something and you realise that the only reason you're saying yes is because of fear, obligation or guilt, then you probably need to say no. And sometimes it's about finding our voice, stopping the people pleasing and really showing up in the world authentically and speaking our truth, which can feel challenging. So take the time to look at what could be a threat to your sobriety. This is one of the best ways to ensure that you continue staying sober for the long term. Protect yourself and only start exposing yourself to those things when you feel ready. The second tip for staying sober for the long term is all about gathering data. The more data you gather on this journey, the better. Most people do that by using a journal. It can help us dump the things that are causing us emotional discomfort in our mind onto paper, which can make things feel much more rational and understandable. But more importantly, it enables us to look back and see how far we've come. We can measure the progress that we've made. Without having the data, it's really hard to get analytical about the improvements that have happened in our lives. Personally, I measured my mood, so I scored my mood every day out of 10. And I really built a clear picture of how things were starting to improve, how my mood was improving, my emotions were becoming more stable. And it was simply a case for me, as well as journaling, of scoring things out of 10. And then I could easily track over time how much better everything was becoming. That data served me so well because it gave me concrete evidence as to why a life without alcohol was the right choice for me. And I want that for you. I want you to find out, but you're gonna need to have some data in order to make decisions that are based on fact. That is so important. You don't want to make decisions based on gut instinct. You want some proper information so that you can follow the right path. And believe me, if you take a break from drinking, all that data is going to be there for you. And it's also going to be pretty good. You're going to feel so many benefits that you're probably not going to want to go back to drinking. I also recommend putting in place a new sobriety routine. Many of us in the past had a routine that involved opening a bottle of wine every evening or heading to the pub. And we're going to find ourselves with more mental capacity, more space in our minds and more time on our hands. So it's important to fill that void with new things and to make a new routine that works for you. And you'll probably find that because you're working on improving yourself, your sense of self-awareness is growing, you'll start to understand 
understand what it is you really need and what it is that really brings you joy and happiness into your life. So many people give up their hobbies, give up their passions when they start drinking. And when they stop drinking, they rediscover them. In my case, that was art and painting and writing, as you can see from my books. And they're things that I've rediscovered since I stopped drinking. And they were things that alcohol took away from me when I started drinking. So think about what your passions are. Think about creating a new sobriety routine. Change it up a little bit. Get outside of your comfort zone and start looking at what you can do to invite more joy into your life. It's also important to surround yourself with people who really understand what you're doing. I recommend finding a good community. I run a Facebook group called Be Sober. You're welcome to join that. There's a brilliant YouTube community right here, right now. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. I also run regular stop drinking boot camps where you can connect with people on a face to face or online basis. I'll put a link to those above me right now because there's actually some boot camp spaces available at the moment and I would love you to come along to the next one. But no matter how you choose to do it, it's important to have a community around you, to be surrounded by people who understand what you're doing, people who are on the same journey and people that you can lean on and turn to if things become challenging for you. So do find the right community that feels like a good fit. A big part of staying sober long term for me was finding a new go to alcohol free drink. Now, of course, there's alcohol free wines and alcohol free beers. But for me, botanical drinks have been a big part of my sober story. Drinks like Seedlip, Kaleno, Barago, the list is endless. And if you look on websites like Wise Bartender, you will find hundreds of these type of drinks. And they feel like grown up drinks. They're in wonderful, beautiful bottles and packaging, and they feel special. I enjoy drinking them. And above all, they taste great with tonic water and a slice of lime. So find a new go-to drink to fill that void that alcohol once occupied. And I even have an alcohol-free glass. Now, you can't buy an alcohol-free glass. It's just a glass that is special to me and that I have my alcohol-free drinks in. Nobody else is allowed to use that glass. So get yourself an alcohol-free glass and make it special if it feels right to you. But of course, if zero alcohol drinks trigger you in any way or remind you of alcohol, then they might not be a good fit. But at least explore them and give them a try. Many people treat them like a new hobby and they go on this wonderful taste test where they experience all these different drinks and find out what is the best fit for them. So do that if it feels right. Staying sober long term also involves accepting that there will be moments where times are hard. Life's not a constant bed of roses and we can face challenges at different times in our lives. And equally, when we first stop drinking, there can be discomfort. Our sleep can be disrupted. Our emotions can be unstable. Our mood can go up and down. But things do settle over time. But it's important to understand that life can still throw us a few curveballs. And there's times when we will feel like we're Suffering. Stopping drinking doesn't solve all of your problems, but what it does do is give you the mental capacity and the emotional maturity to be able to handle those challenging moments far better. Instead of spiraling out of control emotionally and then opening a bottle of wine by way of a coping mechanism, you will find that you feel more grounded and you're able to cope with these situations better. But know that there will be times when things might feel hard, but this experience will teach you that you always come out the other side. These things always pass. Just like the good things, everything passes. There's a phrase, this too shall pass. And I don't think I've ever heard a truer phrase. And I also recommend finding a mentor. Now, this might just be somebody that you connect with in a Facebook community or in one of my programs. But whoever that is, find somebody who you aspire to be like. Maybe somebody who's been alcohol free for longer, somebody whose values that you admire, somebody who's absolutely smashing their sobriety and you want to be just like them. That's OK. Don't be afraid to reach out to these people. I did exactly the same thing. I found a couple of people who had been alcohol free for well over a year. This was when I first quit. And I 
set myself up to be just like them. I reached out to them, I learned from them, I grabbed hold of their coattails. And I actually have some space at the moment for one-to-one sobriety coaching. So if you wanna aspire to be like me and you wanna learn how to quit just like I did, you can go to my website and you can book some one-to-one coaching sessions with me. I don't have space that often, so take advantage of it. Don't miss out if you think that's something that will help you. And right next to me is a brilliant workshop that I put together that will help you go into all of this a whole lot deeper and share a whole lot more tactics, tools and techniques that will help you stay sober for the long term. So click on that, you can watch it straight away and that will take you on to the next stage of learning how to master sobriety and completely change your life for the long term. And I'll see you again on the next video very, very soon.